Well, then welcome back to today's final squeeze of a splash of paint. But it's time for us to go through the looking glass with popular pencil wizard Malcolm Cudmore as he conjures up some more practical advice for seeing things in a new perspective. I love to encourage people to draw from real subjects and not just from photographs. There's nothing wrong with taking drawings from photographs or paintings, but I love to encourage people to actually draw from real things. But the biggest reaction I get is that the world is too complicated a place. Things are three-dimensional. It's very difficult to work out exactly how things should go in a drawing. I suppose, as a two-dimensional artist, I've trained myself to see a three-dimensional world in two dimensions. I have a little analogy, and I do hope it makes sense. It's a little bit like I'm walking around wherever I go holding a small sheet of plate glass in front of me. Everything I look at is looked at through this sheet of glass. Every now and again, I'll see something, it might be a scene or a landscape or a person, and I think that would make an interesting drawing. So I stand still, I let go of the sheet glass with one hand, and I reach into my pocket and get a pen out. And I literally trace what I see through the glass onto the glass. So I should have a fairly accurate drawing. All my marks, in fact, are going to line up exactly with the things that I see through the glass. I'm aiming for something quite similar when I'm drawing. If I were to take that sheet of glass with all the marks on and show it to somebody who was not with me at the time, hopefully they'd be able to recognise, just by looking at the sheet glass, exactly what I'd been looking at and the scene that I'd pictured. I'm aiming for something quite similar when I'm drawing. Although, of course, I'm not looking through my drawing, my drawing is quite close to what I'm looking at. And a little technique that I find really useful is to actually trace across the object that I'm looking at, or a particular line or a shape, in space, directly in front of it, uh, fix that movement or that gesture into my muscle memory, move to my drawing surface and make the mark while I still remember what it felt like. So for example, uh, obviously you can't see it, but there's a cable coming out of the camera that I'm looking at at the moment, which comes down at an angle, a bit like this. So I could look at the angle with my pencil and transfer the angle to my drawing, or I could literally trace across it with closing one eye so I can see it clearly, get that angle into my muscle memory, move just to the side to wherever my drawing surface is or my sketch pad and make that mark while I still remember it. And that's true of vertical and horizontal lines, it's true of arcs and curves, but I, uh, it's a little process that I adopt all the time. Uh, give it a try, I think you'll find it's really helpful. Nice little tip there to help capture what the eye can see, thanks Malcolm. Right, before we answer a few more of your questions from the Splash Your Paint post bag, we've just got time to squeeze in a quick demonstration from versatile artist Paul Beatty, as he shares his handy hint for giving your painting some rock solid texture. I'm going to show you how to use a natural sponge to paint rocks. What we're going to do is we're working with acrylics. We have titanium white, ultramarine blue, yellow ochre, cadmium yellow light and burnt umber. Okay. As it's acrylics, I'm just going to put a little bit of water in, into the sponge just so it's easy to clean as, you, as you're using it. I'm going to come straight into the ultramarine blue add some uh, burnt umber and just get a nice dark mix. As you probably know, um, burnt umber and ultramarine blue can make an absolutely gorgeous black. And you can have it vary on both sides, black blue, black brown, which it just depends how much you, you add into the mix. So that's it for now. I've just got a, a good mix of colour. I'm just going to come in here and I'm just going to create a, a bit of a rock. There you go, there's a, there's a big old rock on the ground there. Okay, that's a, that's a good base to start with. All I'm doing is I'm just dabbing the end of the sponge in, into the uh, support like this. And I'm just creating a, a basic shape. And I'll try work within the, um, the areas of that shape. Okay, I've got a good basic colour there. I think I want to add a little bit more black in there. So I'm going to just come back in here, get some more blue. Small burnt umber, a little bit too much burnt umber, get some more blue in it. And um, there you go, that's a nice colour, a little bit more brown. I've already created the basic shape of the rock. Um, I'm going to come in the bottom. I'm just going to create some darks. And these darks 
I'm doing going up the back end here and across the bottom because I'm going to do it with the light coming from the left hand side okay so that's it for that I just need to give the sponge a slight clean as you know acrylics will dry quite quickly depending on how wet the um, the sponge is and you just need to clean it out every now and then just so that you get the next color and it's not going to be tainted by the previous color you've used okay there we go these are great natural sponges, I love using them. They can be used for all sorts of things. They can be used on walls, rocks, all sorts. I just got some titanium white now. I'm going to come in here now and I'm just going to dab it into that. Into that dark mix I already had. To uh, just create a bit of a grey. And you can let the sponge, use the sponge and use, use the actual... Um, natural shape and makeup of the sponge and just dab it on like this you don't have to um, press hard or anything and when you dab in what it's doing is it's creating loads of texture loads of detail that would take ages to paint with a brush beyond so a sponge is brilliant for, for this aspect I just want to make that a little bit grey it's a little bit blue so I'll add in a little bit more of the uh, burnt umber dab more of the white just to make a nicer grey and I'll just come over this again and I'll just dab it on in places there you go and just coming gently over the edges and down the rock towards the base okay let's give this a quick clean what I want to do is I'll maybe add some um, some moss or some lichen to this uh, to the stone. So I'm going to get a little bit of the blue, add a little bit of the cadmium yellow, and maybe a little touch of the um, yellow ochre as well, and just dab it together until you get a nice nice green mix. There you go, that's coming. Maybe a tad more blue to it. Just to bring that out. Remember, don't over mix the paint when you're using a sponge. Leave a good variety of the colour in it. And I'm just going to come in here now and I'm just going to just add some little dabs here, here and there. Turn in the sponge as you use it because different parts of the sponge have got different colour mixes. And just, just adding that to, to the rock to add a bit of moss growing on it. There. And to finish it off, I think I'll just, um, to show the effect, full effect, you can't really tell properly when it's just a, a rock by itself. So I'm going to come in with a brush, and I'm just going to put a few blades of grass in the foreground. Just use some of that same green, a little bit more yellow, light yellow cadmium. And um, again, try not to overmix it too much because that will add the detail. i just come into the foreground here and, and just add some, some grasses coming in. And again, just load your brush. Get some more of that yellow green on there. And just flick it upwards to add some grasses in front of this, uh, in front of this rock. So we need a bit deeper green there, so I'm gonna add a bit more of the, um, yellow ochre because yellow ochre and uh, ultramarine blue make a beautiful green nice rich dark green so there you go how's that okay I'll just come in here I'm using a darker color towards the back because that's that's all in shadow and and that's basically it it's it's just a a quick foreground sketch just to add, add a bit of um, balance to it and kind of plant it on the page slightly um, but the, the sponge is brilliant you know I mean it's a it's a great tool to use and uh, it can be used for so many different things skies all sorts really so it's a, it's a great thing to have in your toolkit and a must really so that's it that's how to paint a, a basic rock this one. 
Thanks, Paul. Sponges really are a great little artistic essential. They're perfect for adding texture and lots of detail to your paintings. Okay, it's almost time to wrap up today's program, but before we do, we've just got time to answer a few more of your artistic questions that you've been sending in to the Splash Your Paint Studio. Gillian Cook was on the SIA forum to say, I'm new to acrylic painting and need some advice on sealing or varnishing my first painting. PA and Smart offer their advice in reply. Varnishing acrylic painting will protect them from the environment and from any light damage, especially if you're going to hang it. I would recommend keeping a special varnish brush about an inch and a half wide and apply two or three coats of a special acrylic varnish. Apply each coat thinly and in different directions to the previous. You should allow 24 hours between each coat. Also, don't varnish your acrylic painting when it seems dry. Acrylics appear to dry very quickly, but the underpainting may still be wet, so it's best to wait three to four weeks before applying the first coat of varnish. You could also try a spray varnish. This does help avoid any tendency to brush paint the varnish on and cause an uneven effect. And Roy Nadin has also been on the SAA forum to say, I've painted lots of animals and landscapes, but never a personal portrait. So I'd really like some advice on portrait painting for first timers, especially for those who are nervous about capturing an acquaintance realistically. PA Carol Kibble was quick to provide her answer. She says, the fact that you are painting a person makes you nervous. Try this, turn your reference photos upside down so that you are now looking more carefully for shapes and tonal changes rather than worrying about the face. This does work for quite a lot of people. I sometimes use this method halfway through a painting as it helps me see more clearly where the adjustments are needed. By changing your perspective, you'll find any nervousness disappears and you can focus on the job in hand. Well, folks, that's all we've got time for today. But remember, for more artistic advice, and news on the latest offers and discounts available on all your favorite products, visit the Home Shop section of the SAA website. Simply visit saa.co.uk and discover a colorful world of artistic inspiration. In the meantime, join us next week when Keith Pennick takes us on an acrylic mountain adventure. Popular SAA artist Jeremy Ford shares his top tips for correcting blooming errors in our practical art by exercise. And Louise Bogard demonstrates how to paint a wonderful winter tree using just one colour. So tune in next time for another vibrant edition of A Splash of Paint. If you'd like to receive a regular splash of paint, sign up to the SAA's free e-newsletter. Visit www.saa.co.uk. We'll make sure you get all the latest news, exclusive offers and events delivered direct to your desktop. 